Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Lab 207 Webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about waste. Topic for the day is going to be waste disposal via landfills and incineration. So as always, let me get you your objective. I won't get going. By the end of this video, you should be able to discuss the construction, benefits, and drawbacks of waste disposal via landfills and incineration. Before we start talking about landfills and incineration, I want to talk about the time before there were landfills. And in a second, I'll tell you about what a landfill is. But people have always had waste that they need to dispose of. Historically speaking, people would just take that waste somewhere outside of town and toss it on the land. There was usually an area outside of town that people would put all their stuff in, but there was no bearing of the waste. There was no real management plan. It was just, hey, take your waste to this place and toss it to the ground. Don't cover it, don't seal it up, none of that stuff. It was known as a open dump because it was open. Obviously, open dumps have many problems. You get contamination in the land, but you also have got smell. The trash attracts rodents and other undesirable pests. You can get disease organisms breeding in those areas. So open landfills certainly not the best option, but or sorry, open dumps certainly not the best option, but it's what we had before we got to landfills. Now, a landfill by definition is an area where a pit is dug, trash is put in that pit, and then it is covered over. Um, they are often known as sanitary landfills, and I'll talk about why that is in a minute. But the basic idea of a landfill is they collect trash. They do produce a substance called leachate, which is something I'm going to talk about through the rest of this video, so you need to be familiar with it. When rain falls on a dump, it works its way down through the land and through the trash, and as that water works its way through the trash, it dissolves chemicals that can dissolve into the water. It might dissolve me metals. It might dissolve... Um, or release ions. Either way, as this water works its way through the trash, it's picking up all of these chemicals and ions and toxins that can run through the trash and then out into the ground. And this is known as leachate. So the stuff that the water collects and then takes away is known as leachate. If that leachate gets out into the ground or groundwater sources or rivers or whatever, obviously that's going to contaminate any drinking water or streams or whatever that it comes into contact with. So most landfills are constructed in a manner that can deal with the leachate that is produced. And while I'm talking about landfill construction, let's go ahead and take a look at the construction of a landfill. So as I mentioned already, landfills are going to start out as a pit that you can put trash into. Now the first thing that we do for our landfill is to line it with one or two things. Most landfills are going to be lined with clay because clay is usually impermeable so water and things cannot run through it very well. It also collects positively charged ions which would be associated with metals. So that would be the first strategy to keep everything inside. The second is to line it with plastic. So most landfills are going to be first lined with clay and plastic to hold everything inside. Then I talked about that leachate because you're still going to have rain and water falling on top of the waste. So down in the bottom of the landfill there is going to be a series of pipes and these pipes are going to have the job of collecting any leachate that is produced by this landfill so as water runs down through it'll collect in the liner in the bottom and then run into the pipes now once this landfill is done it is full it's no longer useful the owners of the landfill will cap it which means that they're going to put a layer of plastic and probably clay over the top of it to seal everything inside. They are going to put in these pipes that are going to collect and vent any methane that is produced as that waste decomposes and let it out to the outside environment. They're also going to build this landfill such that there is a hill over the top so that any rain that falls runs off to the sides of the landfill rather than down and into the landfill. And finally, you're going to keep collecting the leachate so that it can be taken away and treated and dealt with. There will also be a groundwater monitoring well, which you can see right here. It goes down into any aquifers that might be in the area to make sure that the leachate from the dump or from the landfill is not getting into the groundwater supply. When we're considering things that should be put into a landfill, the best candidates are things that cannot be recycled composted or are hazardous waste. So some major things that cannot be thrown into, into landfills are household chemicals 
Oil, antifreeze, paints, uh, I can't put any electronics into a landfill. Batteries are a no-no. Anything that's got a substantial quantity of metal because that metal can dissolve and be carried away in the leachate. So things that are good to go to landfills are stuff that don't compost easily. You can't recycle them and they are not toxic. Keep that in the mind next time you go to throw something away. Now, when it comes to things like e-waste and recycling, obviously there are separate methods for dealing with those types of waste. Now, once a landfill has reached the end of its usable life, it can be reclaimed. And what we mean by reclaimed is, as I talked about a second ago, you can cap over the top of that landfill and then put down some layers of soil and grow grass over the top of the landfill. Now, landfills have had many things built on top of them. You can build parks on top of them. You can build golf courses. You can just have open recreation areas. Obviously, the environmental agencies in the area are going to keep monitoring that area to make sure that nothing toxic is coming up through the grass. Also, they're going to keep uh, monitoring the leachate that is produced from that landfill. But overall, the land can be reclaimed and it can be made useful. Again, you probably can't build buildings and stuff on it because over time that trash that is underneath is going to settle and you don't want the land under your building settling. Now as with anything else you have got to pay for it. For the most part landfills are run by private companies. They aren't run by the city. There's a private company that runs them. So the private company has got to make money which means that they are going to charge the city to dump the trash into their landfill. The fee that is charged for a truck dumping its waste into a landfill is known as the tipping fee. Tipping fees at the time that your textbook was written were roughly $35 per ton across the U.S. Though some areas of the country that have got less land available for dumping have got higher tipping fees, especially up in the Northeast. It could be almost $70 bucks per ton. Um, messing with the tipping fee can encourage recycling. So if a... I don't know, waste company wants to make a little more money, they can raise their tipping fees, but they got to find that balance because a higher tipping fee means that there's going to be more money required, which means the city is going to charge people more money to dispose of their waste. If people have to pay more money to dispose of waste, they'll probably start recycling more because usually most cities will take the recyclables for free because the city can sell the recyclable material and make money on it. So tipping fees are a way that recycling can be encouraged. They're also a way to discourage the throwing away of things into a landfill. When cities are thinking about where to build a landfill, they get to think about this idea of siting. And siting is basically the place where something is put. So in considering the siting of a landfill, there are a couple things that need to be really thought about. The first one is environmental impact. A landfill needs to be placed such that it is not going to contaminate any water sources or groundwater supplies through leachate or other chemicals that might run out of that landfill. So first idea is environmental impact. But then beyond that, got to think about this idea of NIMBY and environmental justice. NIMBY stands for not in my backyard. It's basically the idea that most people would say, yes, a landfill is a good thing. We need somewhere to throw our waste so that it is dealt with properly. But they will say, well, I think the landfill is a great thing. I don't want it in my backyard. I don't want to see it. I don't want to have to deal with it. I just want it somewhere else. Now, people with political power, usually people who have money, can organize and fight against the placement of a landfill near them. So you will never find a landfill near a rich suburb because the people in that area have the power, the know-how, the knowledge, the money to fight against its placement there. This gets into the idea of environmental justice. Environmental justice is the idea that certain groups of people might bear a greater burden for environmental impact than other groups of people. So while the rich people are fighting to say, hey, don't put this landfill near me, the people who don't have the money or the political connections and knowledge aren't going to be able to fight against it, which means that the landfill is going to be put near poorer areas. You will never find a landfill next to a rich suburb, which means that the people in the poorer areas are going to have to bear whatever impacts come from that landfill and the environmental degradation that it causes. Other concerns that we have got when it comes to uh, landfills are as follows. Environmental leaching, that would be leachate that I've already talked about. All dumps are going to produce at least a little bit of leachate that can't be collected and can make it into the ground and groundwater supplies. So that's first concern. Second one is methane production. When waste is put, especially organic waste, is put into conditions where there is not a lot of oxygen, it decomposes and produces methane, which we've talked about as being a really strong uh, greenhouse gas. So there has to be a plan in place to deal with any methane that is produced. And also 
scientists have found that landfills actually have very low decomposition rates. Once everything is sealed up into that landfill, it's not going to decompose very much because there isn't air, there isn't water, there isn't rotation, there isn't much microbial life, there just aren't the conditions needed to break that stuff down. So once stuff is thrown into a landfill, it pretty much stays there. It doesn't go away. So those are the major concerns associated with landfills, which means that there are going to be some alternatives. Some people would argue for the incineration of waste. And incineration of waste is just burning the waste. A lot of waste burns really well because it's made of mostly hydrogen and carbon, paper, food waste, plastics, things like that. So it's going to burn really well. If you incinerate waste, it can reduce the volume of that waste by 90% and it can reduce the weight by 75%. So in a world that is increasingly short on space and rich in trash, the idea of being able to reduce waste by 90% seems like a really really good idea. So let's look at the process of incineration. Here's basically how MSW incineration works. The waste comes in and is dumped into a bunker. In the bunker it is sorted. Anything that is burned is taken out and disposed of. Otherwise things that are able to be burned are dumped into the hopper which drops down into the incineration chamber where things are burnt. Now Everything that can be burned will burn. It will be burned, and as it's burned, it is released as carbon dioxide and water vapor. Things that cannot be burned or don't burn collect in the bottom as ash. Ash is just simply anything that would not incinerate or it would not combust. This ash needs to be dealt with, and we'll talk about some environmental problems with ash later on, but the ash falls into the bunker where it is taken away and disposed of otherwise or used for other things. And also, this incineration chamber is going to produce a tremendous amount of heat. This heat can be used to heat a building. It can be used to boil water to make electricity, as we've talked about with coal and natural gas and nuclear power. If the trash is burned and the energy is used to produce power, it's called an energy to power plant. As all this gas is produced, it goes through a bag house filter and it may go through some of the other air pollution reduction procedures that we talked about. This is going to collect any particulates, maybe reduce the pollutants a little bit, and then the remaining gas is vented out into the environment. So that's the basic idea behind an incineration plant. Now the major drawbacks of them is they are expensive. This is a big building. It's a huge operation. It takes a lot of energy to run. Energy, fossil fuels, remember that. So they are expensive. There's also that ash that I talked about. Now, when the waste is burned, everything that can't be burned off is left in the ash, which means that the ash is highly concentrated. So any chemicals or toxins that were in that waste that is burnt is now concentrated down into the ash. And that concentrated ash is a problem because it has to be dealt with. So usually the ash is going to be tested. If it is not toxic, it's going to be taken away and put into a landfill or used to make concrete or cement block or something like that. If the uh, ash is too toxic, it's going to have to be taken away to a toxic waste facility where it can be dealt with separately. Also, some people would argue that incineration plants can discourage recycling because a city is going to need to make money in order to run this huge incineration plant, which means that they might set up uh, incentives that encourage dumping of trash and discourage recycling. Also, uniform burning of the waste is a problem because not everything burns at the same temperature. So some things are going to burn off very easily. Other things are going to be left behind in the waste stream. And I think that's it. We got waste. We got to deal with the waste. So we take that waste and we either throw it in a landfill or we burn it up in an incinerator. Make sure you know how both work. Make sure that you know the environmental impacts of each and the benefits of each. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. K. Hopefully we'll see you again.